Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to be comparing white versus performance yellow versus amber off-road lights. Now, if this video sounds like something that you probably watched from us here at KC, it's because we just introduced the performance yellow lenses to our lineup, and we wanted to do a reboot of a video that we did many years ago comparing amber versus white lights. So that's what this one's gonna be all about. We're gonna be talking about the science behind it. We're gonna be showing off real world beam pattern footage. We're gonna be showing driving on the Can MX3, all that good stuff. So with that, I'm Taylor and welcome to KC. All right, so let's start off by cutting right to the chase and describing when is the best scenario or the best possible environment to use each different option for off-road lighting. So uh, starting here on the white light, this is gonna be best for super clear, high visibility type condition. So this is gonna be when there's no fog, no dust, no snow, or anything like that in the air to disrupt the, the light itself from penetrating onto the trail, right? So super clear, wide open environments, perfect for white lights, or when you are leading the trail on a night run, you got a bunch of your friends behind you, things like that. Next up, performance yellow. The best scenario for running this is going to be in those environments that do have dust or snow or fog or anything like that in the air that's interrupting the visibility. So this is when you now have either moderate or poor visibility light and you wanna be traveling at higher speeds. So because this is kind of an in-between color temperature, which we're gonna get into in a little bit in the video, in between both the amber and the white, it's perfect for those higher speed scenarios. So as you might guess, then as we move to the amber light, the amber shields here, this is going to be best for, again, those poor visibility conditions, super heavy dust, super heavy fog or snow, things along those lines, and you're gonna be traveling at lower, slower speeds. Okay, so now that you know the best option to use in your particular conditions or environments, let's take a look at why that might be. First things that we have to cover, the most fundamental, I think, of all of it is the Kelvin scale. A lot of you have probably already heard this, but in a nutshell, the Kelvin scale is a unit of measurement that describes the color temperature of a light source. So in other words, this describes the warmth or the coolness of a light. So on the lower side of the Kelvin scale is the oranges, the, the reds, the oranges, the yellows. And then as it works its way up the scale, it kind of passes through the white spectrum all the way into the blues and then the violets on the high side of the Kelvin scale. So just for references, you're going somewhere in the 2000s for the oranges and the reds, all the way up to the eight, nine, tens, upper for the blues and the violets, things along those lines. So with that being said, where does each one of these fall on that Kelvin scale? So we'll start here at white because this is kind of the central point. So white is right in that 5,000 to 5,500 Kelvin area. Think of this as noon on a nice sunny day, that sun is bright overhead. That's about that 5,000 to 5,500 Kelvin temperature that you're gonna be looking at for this light right here. Then moving more on the inside for the performance yellow lens itself, this is gonna be roughly in that 2,500 Kelvin spectrum. Then again, lower down the scale is our amber light and this is gonna be roughly in that 2,000 Kelvin side of the spectrum. Okay, so now that you know the fundamentals of the Kelvin scale and color temperatures, let's go ahead and take all of these lights outside onto the trail and light them up so that you can actually see how those color temperatures translate into a real world scenario for off-road. So in order to gain that increased visibility in those poor visibility conditions, like the dust, the snow, the fog, the things like that, it's really important to understand what the compromises are that kind of facilitate that. So in order to do that, we wanted to set up a couple different things and show off what that really looks like as you're on the trail at night. So um, realistically, as you work your way down on that color spectrum, you will expect to see a loss in usable output as you go from the white to the performance yellow down to the amber. So we are out here right now, right behind me, we have the light set up on a stand and then pointed down the trail, we have reflective traffic cone set up at every 50 foot intervals. Now the cool part that we did is we brought our lux meter out here and we set that up at the first 50 foot interval. If you don't know what lux measurements are, it's really just a real world measurement of true light output. It's dependent on beam pattern, all that kind of stuff. 
So we have minimized all the variables right now. We're all using the same beam pattern for both the white, the performance yellow, and the amber light. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be comparing those different Lux measurements of those three. This is not the scientific way to test Lux, but that's not what we care about right now. We care about the relative values of how they compare to one another. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this on a static setup, how these different lights compare to one another. So um, the next step is for us to go out and actually show off real world beam pattern footage in the Can-Am right now. So we got the GoPro here, we got a GoPro here, we got all kinds of good stuff. We're gonna show that off right now. So uh, let's dive right into that. And we're gonna start with white, then we'll switch over to the performance yellow, and then we will swap to the amber uh, to kind of finish off the video. So yeah, let's get to it. So we are just getting back from the trail right now. And overall, that was a really interesting look at the differences between the white versus the performance yellow versus the amber off-road lights. So um, it was really cool for me to even compare those different Lux values while we were out there um, during those static session while we had kind of the lights on that single uh, little tripod stand set up aim down the trail really fascinating stuff really cool to see that so just a little bit of a summary a little bit of a conclusion here for y'all um, as we saw the white is really going to perform well in those situations where there's not a lot of dust being kicked up the performance yellow is going to do um, a really good job in moderate um, visibility conditions um, where there is dust snow fog things along those lines and you actually want to be traveling at a higher speed then finally, to the lowest color temperature on the Kelvin scale, that amber, that's really, really good for those super heavy dust moments, super heavy snow, fog, things like that. And especially if you are just traveling at slower speeds. So if you're an overland guy, a Jeep person, things along that, you know, then maybe the amber is a really good option for you. If you are more into the race scene, UTVs, things like that, performance yellow is not a bad way to go. So. If you found this video useful, please give us a big thumbs up. If you got questions still remaining after all this, please leave it in the comment section below or give us a phone call. We're happy to chat and kind of get your, your questions all dialed in for you. So thanks for tuning in and remember to adventure further.